take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. It's really astounding to see just how many, or should I say how few, really believe that Many, even in the church, are not going to die. That they're going to be caught up in the middle of the air. And I don't understand it, but for some reason, the majority today are looking for the graveyard. And even when they speak of the resurrection, they don't really believe it. They don't. It's sad. But I hope that this message will help you to wake up, help you to really wake up. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we need your help, God, to deliver this message. We pray, Lord, that the result of this message is there will be those that will awake out of their slumber and that they will not continue to slumber and sleep, Lord. We ask that you bless and anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we begin in uh, the book of John. chapter 6, and verse 66. John chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you or ye also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. I was going to give a title to this message. It'd be very simple, but yet very profound. Hearing, but not listening. Hearing, but not listening. Many of you understand that when Peter said these words, he didn't mean it, right? Because it wasn't long before he was denying that he even knew the Lord. Jesus told Simon Peter that he was going to deny him. Peter was, he was hearing, but he wasn't listening. Now, what does this have anything to do with the resurrection? John chapter 11, in verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany of the town of Mary and her sister, Martha. 
It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he saith to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken to them of taking rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his dis fellow disciples, Let us go also, let us also go, that we may die with him. Where in the world did Thomas get that idea? Then when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had laid in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now remember the title of the message. Hearing, but not listening. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Listen, listen, don't just hear, listen, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this?
Martha responds the same way that Simon Peter did just before he denied the Lord. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. It's the same thing Peter said. Same thing Simon Peter said. And both of them were not listening. They were hearing, but they weren't listening. Because if Martha had been listening, she would have answered the question. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He asked her a question. How did Martha miss this? He asked her a question. I'll tell you what she did. She ignored him. She sidestepped his question. Why? Because she didn't believe. Are you listening? Simon Peter argued with the Lord. He fought the truth. He wouldn't listen. And I believe a lot of people in this hour are not listening. Brother Joseph preaches his heart out day after day after day, trying to help you understand there is an overcoming life in Christ Jesus, the power of the resurrection, that you do not have to die. You don't have to go to the grave. Do we fail to remember what it says in Thessalonians? The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together in the clouds, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Do we hear? Yes, but do we listen? Not always. I'm going to slow down because I don't want to have you don't want you to have any excuse. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He said, "He that liveth, someone that's alive and and is believing, continues to believe in the Lord." shall never die. Why is it today the church does not focus on that? If the church really believed that they were never going to die, don't you think the church would be different? Don't you think the church would be more on fire today? If the church really believed in the resurrection power, if they really believed in the overcoming life, the church today wouldn't be so sick unto death. The church today would not be slumbering and going to sleep if the church really believed they were never going to die. Going to live forever. Never going to go to the grave. Never going to see corruption, brothers and sisters. Going to follow Jesus. And our bodies will never see corruption. Passing from death unto life. This mortality being swallowed up in life. Are you listening? Are you listening? Not just hearing. Are you listening? I believe there's a few, maybe maybe one or two out there that actually can hear what Jesus was asking. Does this offend you, brothers and sisters? Listen to what it says here. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What were they offended at? The Bible says they were offended at his words. His words offended them. Look at the question. Will you also go away?
Do you see anybody answering the question? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. At least Peter, at least Simon Peter, with a mixture, tried to answer the Lord. He was willing to answer the question, but he wasn't really listening. Because when the Lord said to him, Peter, you're going to deny you knew me. He didn't believe him. I'm just wondering, folks, are we really listening? Are we really listening? Do we have an ear to hear? Do we hear only what we want to hear? I think we do. I think for the most part, God's people only hear what they want to hear. Because if we look at the book of Revelation, the Lord said, I have somewhat against you. Are you listening, people? The church that we are in right now, this church age we're in right now, is the latest in age. And the Lord rebukes this church age. His accusation is, you are wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, and you're naked. He does not commend them. He rebukes them. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's the message to this church of this generation. It's not that the Lord is commending the church. So how come the church doesn't mourn? How come the church is not mourning? How come the church is not humbling itself? If the Lord is not pleased with the church today. I believe that the church today is a lot like Lazarus. Sick unto death. Jesus waited until he died. Amen. Does the Lord see the condition of the church today? Absolutely. And he's, he's got provision made for the church during the first three and a half years in the wilderness where they will be nourished for three and a half years from the presence or from the face of the devil, face of the serpent. Didn't have to be that way, just like it didn't have to be that way for Simon Peter. He didn't have to deny the Lord. He didn't have to be sifted as wheat. He wouldn't listen. How many of you that subscribe to this channel are really listening? How many of you? How many of you really are listening? Because they weren't listening back then. Did you know that even after the resurrection, the Bible says they still did not believe? They still at that point did not believe that Jesus was alive. They thought they were looking at a ghost. And yet, for three years, during his ministry, he constantly said to them over and over that he was going to go to the cross and be crucified. He was going to rise again the third day. He told them that many times throughout the three years of his ministry. They were hearing it, but they weren't listening. And that includes John. All of them. None of them were listening. It said, as yet they still did not believe after he was resurrected. Oh yeah, they were hearing. Just like you hear. But they weren't listening. 
They weren't listening. What's the difference? What's the difference between hearing and listening? Anybody can hear something. But to listen means to adhere to. It means to do what you're being told. It means to respond. Amen. We see the Shulamite. He's knocking at the door. She can hear him knocking, but she's not listening. She's going to sleep. Just like many today. Going to sleep spiritually. You're not paying attention. You're not really paying attention. Jesus said, These words I speak unto you, that my joy may remain in you. If you really listen to his words, you'd have joy. You would have joy in your heart. The church today is not on fire for the Lord. The church is not living an overcoming life. The church is not rejoicing in the Lord. We don't see a victorious church today. Amen, people. Jesus says, as many as I love, I rebuke. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's what he says to the church. That's the message to the church in this hour. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You say you're rich, increased with goods. But I say unto you, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, miserable, and naked. Do you know that's the same? There's only one other place in the New Testament where that word wretched is seen. And it's where Paul the Apostle says, before he understands the overcoming life, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from this body of death? That's before he understood what he records in Romans chapter 8. Oh, wretched man that I am. But he gets a revelation from the Lord. After he asked the question, who is going to deliver me from this body of death? He follows it up by saying, I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, if we live after the flesh, we'll die. But if we live after the spirit, we shall live. Anybody listening? Not just hearing, but listening. Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, has provided for you and I through his cross and through his resurrection an overcoming life. Overcomers. Victorious. Glorious. There's no room for excuses. Amen. There's no room for excuses. It says they are without excuse. And to whom much is given, much is required. Do you think the Lord's just making light of the church today, making light of his words? No, they're going to pay for it. They're gonna, it's going to cost them. And not just cost them for even just three years it's, or three and a half years. It's going to cost them forever. going to cost the church as a whole. Are you listening? It's going to cost them. It's a big difference between being with the Lord in his throne and reigning and ruling with him and being his bride and being his wife. Being his brethren. Being the elders. Anybody listening? It's a difference between children, between babes, children, and sons. 
and fully developed, fully grown men that are elders, that are ancients, the ancients, elders, those that have matured in Christ with his wisdom, those that have grown in stature to the measure, to the stature of the fullness of Christ. Those are babes. Those are not children. Those are fully developed, fully mature. Amen, folks. Jesus was not only our Savior, he's our example. We're supposed to follow the pattern. We're supposed to be modeling our lives after him. To be like Jesus. Amen. He said, I do nothing of myself. He said, I only say or I only speak what I hear the Father say, and I only do what I see the Father doing. I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. We need to quit leaning on Jesus as though he's a crutch. And start leaning on him for his strength, for his power. That word leaning doesn't mean you're just leaning against him. It means you have fully surrendered and he's carrying you. You're not going to cross the threshold of eternity unless he's carrying you. He's going to carry his bride. Are you listening? Who is this coming up out of the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? It says his hand is under her head and his his other hand is under her back. And he's, he's holding her. He's embracing her. He's carrying her out of the wilderness. This world is the wilderness. And Jesus Christ is going to carry his bride up out of this world, across the threshold of eternity, into the glory of God. Hallelujah. You can't bring yourself there. You can't take yourself there. That's why he said to Peter, he said, when you were young, he said, you girded yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. He said, but when you shall be old, you shall stretch forth your hands. Another shall gird you and carry you where you could not go. Amen, brothers and sisters. We need the Lord to gird us. Amen. And carry us across the threshold into his chambers. Amen. Into his chambers. Become one with him. Amen. Dear God, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord. Don't just hear, listen. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. If we're one with him in his death, then we are one with him in his resurrection. Glorified together. These are not just words. These are not fables. These are the words of eternal life that Simon Peter should have listened to. Not just here. He heard him, but he didn't listen. Martha, she could hear, but she didn't listen. Amen. Dear God, people, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every single word. Don't let one word fall to the ground. Don't let one word slip, brothers and sisters. Every single word that comes out of his mouth is important. Every jot, every tittle. Are you listening to me? You need every word, every single word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need it, brothers and sisters. We need his instruction. 
Amen? We need his counsel. We need him. Praise the Lord. Just don't be that attitude, I take it or leave it, attitude. Get to the place where you hang on every single word that comes out of Jesus' mouth. When I was in Bible school, I sat on the front row as close as I could get to the preacher. Why? Because I didn't want to miss a word. And not only was I on the front row in the, in the front seats, and, and I was so close. I, and you couldn't get any closer it comes to the seats, but I was on the edge of my seat. How much more if Jesus Christ himself, when he was in his ministry, dear God, people, John laid his head upon Jesus' bosom. Amen. They were hearing, but they weren't listening. My objective is not to offend you, but we don't always listen. Never die. Never die. Not too long ago, I heard a preacher saying to the people, and it was an old man. I think he was in his 90s. Old preacher. And he was saying to the people, never die. Maybe he didn't hear his own words. Because he's dead. Listen to me, people. Age has no bearing with God. If you want to limit God, you can limit God, but you, but th- there is no bearing there. He's unlimited. He proved that to Abraham and Sarah. Amen. There's no limit with God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Not some things, all things. Amen. So let's quit limiting God. God's people should be the happiest people on this planet, knowing that we have eternal life and that we're never going to die. Amen? Never die. That ought to make you the happiest person on the planet. Never die. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. The best the world has is the hope of reincarnation. You and I have the hope of eternal life, the hope of the resurrection. Amen. Not not going to the grave and being resurrected, but to be swallowed up in the resurrection life, in the resurrection power. Never die. Enoch was not, for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. Elijah went up in a whirlwind. Praise the Lord. God's going to have some in this hour that are not going to see death. Amen. Praise the Lord. The church is a lot like Noah. He was moved with fear and prepared an ark. But the bride of Christ, the, the, the lamb's wife, is like Enoch. Walked with God, he was not, for God took him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I walked with God through the years. I don't remember the words to the song. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. 
Can't think of the words of that song. But... Oh, Lord God Almighty. You know, we sing that song, He Walks With Me. It doesn't say God walked with Enoch. It says Enoch walked with God. Amen. I walked with God. Praise God. It's a big difference. Amen. God will walk with you. He'll put up with you. Amen. But to walk with him? It's a whole nother thing. Amen. Many times we see Jesus went with them. Jesus went with them. But the ideal, the ultimate, is to walk with God. God bless you. the power in the name of the Lord.